Ladies and gentlemen, today in Amplify Science, we're going to be in the plate motion unit. So click on the Mesosaurus fossil, wait for it to load the unit, and then we are in chapter one today. So chapter one, and we've moved on from lesson two. We're into lesson one dash three. Uh, remember, for one dash one, you needed to unlock or lock the settings for all of your classes. So I'm going to lock all of my classes because we took the assessment uh, earlier in 1-1 and then 1-2 we started doing some work and in 1-3 which is what we're doing today we're going to be exploring steps 1 through 4. So as the kids get into 1-3 uh, click on warm up and the warm up comes up and the students are asked to use the plate motion simulation with no instructions they're supposed to just explore and try out what they're able to find that it is able to do. While they're quote unquote playing around, there are a couple questions down here on the bottom that you can say out loud to stimulate conversation between a person and their partner. What do you notice and what can you change inside the sim? And then what questions do you have about the sim? I would give them a couple minutes in between asking both questions. Uh, whether or not you ask your students to write down a response in a journal, or in a OneNote, that would be completely up to you. But while they're messing around, I wanted them to have their screens side by side between them and their partner so they could observe both. And then if something was noticed that the other student didn't notice, they could show each other quick, quite quickly what was able to be done within the simulation. Then we click on Next Activity. We go over to the next screen where the teacher leads them through showing a video. You can have this pull down press play on the video. The video is only 37 seconds long, so I played it twice to be able to have the kids uh, observe it without any introduction to the video. And then the second time I, before I pressed play, I had them observe another part of it, maybe their observations, what they thought the ocean floor would look like before they did. Or perhaps you do that and give them that stimulating question before we start watching the video. Then we move on to the next activity. In the next activities where I veered a little off the path because I didn't use the laminator page or the earthquake page that they gave us from Amplify or the plate boundary map that they gave us, what I used is a, uh, a website from the United States Geological Survey. I typed in earthquake and my it's saved in my bookmark so it comes up quite quickly. On this earthquake page, I have them uh, collect data every single day so they're familiar with this page. But if you get to earthquake.usgs.gov, they can click on latest earthquakes. The page opens up to North America's earthquakes uh, and the list of the earthquakes that are appearing on the map appear on the left. So if you scroll through the list on the left, it'll show you all of the earthquakes that are being registered. Um, I accidentally scrolled and so it's zooming in or zooming out. So what I have the kids usually do is zoom to world to find a massive earthquake of the day. They go over to the list on the left and they scroll through and they look for the largest earthquake of the day. And then in my class, we have them take down that data in a OneNote. They go into their data page and on their data page, they record the date, whether or not it was an earthquake or volcanic activity, location's name latitude, longitude, strength, depth, and then if there was a volcano, we research on Smithsonian Volcano Current Eruptions page what that earthquake was like. So then I minimize the page. I go back to uh, the internet, specifically into OneNote. There's the page. There's Amplify. Uh, so by what I have them do with the earthquake page is I have them take a screenshot of the page but on the earthquake page, what I'm able to do is show them. So if we zoom to, and then if you come up here to the list, you can get rid of the list on the left. And then I have them open up the settings at the cog here on the right. And I show them that there's different queries that you can do within the earthquake page. And so then we start clicking on one day, all magnitudes, and you can see the number of circles that are appearing to represent earthquake activity is increasing. And then you go into seven days and they can start to see more earthquakes around the world. And then they can go into seven days, magnitude 2.5 and greater, and the map becomes more populated. The activity that Amplify has them do, it, it has them take a, a plain, clear 
pa plastic piece of paper, uh, not paper, but a vinyl, and they put it over top of a earthquake registration page, and then they put the dots onto the clear page, and then they transfer the clear page that they put the dots on onto a plate boundary map, and they transfer the dots from the laminated clear page onto the plate boundary page. And I found it quite useful just using this earthquake page to have them click on and adjust. And sometimes when you query a lot of earthquakes, you have to click continue anyway for this to be able to appear. So it puts onto the map and then you start to ask them, okay, these red lines are the plate boundaries where one plate ends and another plate begins. It doesn't show if it's convergent, divergent, or strike slip, but what it or transform if you would rather have a transform for a boundary map instead of a strike slip for a fault. So in this picture here, you're able to have them for the most part notice that all of the earthquake symbols, the circles, are located where the red lines are, indicating that earthquakes occur along plate boundaries. And this is the activity that they would have you do in Amplify. Um, so going back to Amplify. You can almost skip all the way to where they're finishing up the day. Um, so in step three, they're analyzing the maps as well. Um, I have them copy all of the definitions and put them into their OneNote. I have a vocabulary page for every single uh, one of the, and then along with copying and pasting the vocabulary words in there and having a definition, I have them bring in a image to be able to st strengthen their understanding of what the definition means. And after we collect uh, vocabulary for a week, uh, I have them underneath their image. They're going to end up having to create their own definition. <coughs> Excuse me. So once they've been able to understand what the definition means in their own words, then so they'll have the book definition, they'll have a picture, and then they'll have their own definition underneath that in the vocabulary page. So going back to Amplify, now that I get out of OneNote, uh, this, there are a few more definitions in this page here. You can see in 2 and 3 and 4, it's having them walk through and collect definitions. <coughs> Here's the transparency activity in detail. Uh, and then we ended up in our homework in step 4. Step 4 was to have an example, and this is maybe where you at home find yourself with a hard-boiled egg, one for each period or one for the whole class, depending if you're doing this in uh, middle school or elementary school. Um, they need to have, or I don't know if they need to, but they can see, you can ask them about making deviled eggs at Christmas time or some other holiday where they are cracking the shell off a hard-boiled egg and then comparing it to the structure of the plate boundaries of a map of the earth. And then there's three or four questions underneath that, and I have them inserting. Uh, I like to have them answer the questions, so I'm not having to jump back and forth between amplifying one note and amplifying one note. I like to have them just type in here that their answer is one one note, uh, and then we go through and we copy the questions, and then we paste them into one note so that they can finish up their homework. Uh, you can see I've made a page inside of chapter one. We've made a sub page uh, for questions within lesson uh, one dash three. And I control and paste, and the questions will come in. And so then we'll be able to provide what we need to be able to provide for the lesson. Uh, that's our activity for today for lesson one dash three. Hopefully, this was helpful for you.